Good afternoon, nerd fam, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It is day three of Dell Tech World, and it has been a fantastic show so far. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by John Furrier. John, what a, what a cool show. You know, innovation's here. I mean, you know, Dell Tech World has had ups and downs in terms of like, you know, really ace programs, sometimes middle of the road, sometimes look okay, a little bit of yawner um, in terms of technology innovation, but this year it's, it's definitely a 10 plus on innovation. Every aspect of Dell is popping with, with, with growth, energy, um, new engineering projects, so, and that's consistent with pretty much all the companies we've been interviewing and the events we've been going to, and it's kind of an indicator of who's got what going on. Yeah. And, because you, you can't hide an AI, because you either have it or you don't. You know, it's like, that's what we're talking about right now. That is for <laughs> sure. It's going to be a really great conversation. Super excited to welcome our next guest to the show. John Byron, hand me the forward. Thank you so much for being here with us. How has the week been for you? Are you just as blown away as we are by oh, all the excitement? It's been absolutely fantastic, Savannah. Like, this has been so much fun. This is my second Dell Technologies World. We are thrilled to be one of Dell's AI ISV partners. We're doing a ton of work with Dell. It's great to see all of the announcements around the AI factory. Uh, we're actually doing quite a bit of work with that. So, overall, the innovation, like you said, is 10 out of 10. Lots of good new products from Dell, from us, we've announced this week as well. Tell Overall, us about fantastic. your announcements. Yeah, so uh, we have a solution that we actually sell with Dell. It's called Turnkey AI. And Sounds like something everybody would want right now. Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's an out-of-the-box AI solution that can be deployed across any business department. So whether that's sales, marketing, customer engagement, IT operations, legal, procurement, you name it, we have solutions that are ready to go out of the box. And these are real tangible use cases. They're not AI science projects. I guess it's production ready on day one. That really makes a big difference, uh, AI science projects. What a great way of putting that. Give us some examples of what these turnkey solutions are. Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, uh, RFP response is a very popular one for us because everybody has RFPs that they're trying to scale. And ultimately, we have a solution where you can ingest all of your RFPs and actually respond to new RFPs in a fraction of the time with Ooh. greater throughput and about 40 times greater accuracy. There isn't another AI solution on the market that can actually times? do this today. Yep. That's a lot. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. That's, that's absolutely massive. And those processes can be pretty nuanced and the detail there is obviously imperative if you're going to win the RFP. Well, one of the common themes that we see with the Dell AI factory is really bringing your customer data in a secure fashion to that AI compute capability, right? And so what we're able to do through our software layer that sits on top of the AI factory is we're actually able to ingest that data and distill it down to about 2.5% of the original size. Massive. And, and it's a, a huge accelerator because one of the biggest challenges in the AI space, maybe uh, you've heard the, the common term RAG or retrieval augmented generation, it's the big buzzword for NVIDIA Absolutely. and for Dell. So the challenge with RAG is if you have outdated or inaccurate data in your data set, you're going to have inaccurate responses from your large language model. Big and time. so what we're able to do with Blockify, which is this patented ingestion technology, is we're actually able to extract all of that key information, distill it down, and then apply human governance and control to that data set so that you can have that accuracy check to make sure that everything that's being said is the latest, greatest, most accurate version of content. That sounds exactly like what customers want right now. 100%. Where are some of the use cases in the wild where you think people are going to be using this? Or maybe they already are buying yep, this solution are. from you. Yeah, yeah so um, actually one of our, our, our proudest customers that we have that we can talk about today is Dell Technologies. Amazing. So they've actually been using our technology to transform their sales and marketing capabilities for over four and a half years. Wow, cool. So we've been working on a number of hyper-personalized uh, sales proposals and marketing videos and things like that to drive better customer experiences for Dell's customers. And one of the most amazing use cases, they have a proposal activity. They used to spend $15,000 with an advertising agency to produce a single proposal for a customer. And it was beautiful, bespoke, custom tailored content. Right, Everything that you'd want from hyper-personalization. Right. But because of the human effort required and the cost, it, it wasn't easily scalable. So we actually came in, it was our first use case with Dell, where we actually automated that process end to end, and you were able to produce the same quality deliverable for less than 10% of the original cost with the click of a single button in about 60 seconds versus three to six weeks. It's music to a sales team's ears. 100%. Scalable content. Yep. 
Well we, well, we love video, as you know, and I think you're going to start to see multimodal is a big part of the conversation. How does that fit into your system? Um, large language models, foundation models, what are some of the elements you guys support and what's, what's not yet supported? Yeah, great question. So, the multimodality is extremely exciting for us because it unlocks a huge number of additional use cases. For example, we've got a use case with one of the largest police departments in the U.S. right now, where we're actually taking body cam footage from the police officers. We're able to use computer vision to analyze what's going on in the frame, as well as the audio from that recording, and we can help the officers fill out their police reports. I don't know if you've ever seen a police report, but when I saw one for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much information, and it's like, six point font, 100 questions per page, six pages long, like this is seriously complicated stuff. Yep. And so we can actually use that multimodal large language model to extract that information and help the officer capture the critical details so that they yep. can spend more time protecting our citizens as opposed to you know, filling out the paperwork. And maybe hospitals too, with all the, we were having a conversation earlier with yeah. Chris about how doctors are always yep. charting. Yep, 100%. You know, yeah. Paperwork. I mean, I, I feel like we, we talk a lot about AI use cases, and one of the great use cases is it might just eliminate a bunch of our paperwork. And nobody wants to be doing paperwork. Yeah, I hate paperwork, you know I, that's a Yeah, Yeah, both, both of us are not exactly <laughs> the, the paperwork champions of the universe. No, let's challenge the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's, that's not our superpower, but <laughs> hosting cute videos is, <laughs> no, but this is, a, this, this is the killer app. We had our, our earlier guest on that said the killer app of, the, of AI is time. Okay, time back, yeah. time savings, time reduced, avoided, so like, we're starting to see that yeah. answer, Savannah, come out, and it's not, wasn't obvious. You asked me a year ago, what's the killer app for AI? I'm like, oh, uh, manufacturing, uh, not that, no, it's time. Yeah, it is time. It's kind of beautiful when you yeah. think about it. It's, yeah. it's poetic. Yeah. It's, it's enhancing our human experience. You've given us two really good use cases, and I'm curious if you have any more. Oh, 100%, we've got let's, lots. Le uh, yeah, let's hear them, these are cool, this so is fun. Given we're at Dell Technologies, which is a fantastic infrastructure provider, we got to talk about IT ticketing and service management. So uh, we've got a use case in the telco industry for managing data center tickets. You know, there are uh, large scale telco customers out there where they get like 4,000 plus tickets a day from their data centers. And you could have like 1,000 of those tickets that are marked as high priority. Right, of course. And if you have 1,000 high priority tickets, you effectively have no high priority exactly. tickets. So one of the big challenges is aligning business value and outcome with the work that those uh, IT professionals are actually focusing in on. And so, in a lot of cases, it may be that it's actually a low priority ticket for a mission critical system that if there's not a patch applied in the next month, there could be some major outage that impacts service. Right. And that should actually be the thing that's prioritized. So we have a prioritization engine. It's the first of its kind. It can sit on top of uh, service management systems like ServiceNow, and it can ingest all of this information, analyze it, and align that business value and outcome. So now what you're able to do is actually take those high priority things that may have gotten uh, lost and elevate them to number one in the queue, which ultimately enables about a 40% faster response time and about a 230% faster resolution because you're putting your A team on the most important things. A great example of this is in the telco space, iPhone activations are one of the largest revenue drivers of the year during the holiday season. And so we can actually ramp up dynamically priority over that holiday time period to make sure that any ticket that comes in that's affecting that infrastructure gets prioritized so that they can save literally millions of dollars in lost revenue from outages by preventing them faster. That's so cool. How long have you been working on that patented little model you have there for sorting so, that? So the prioritization one was four years in development. We launched it uh, just about six months ago. It's quickly become one of our most popular products. I can imagine. Yep, because you can actually prioritize literally anything. Ticketing is one great use case, but anything that you need to align business value and outcome, whether that's application development, bug fixes, supply chain management, even just general business transformation in terms of where your people are focusing their time in your transformational initiatives, these are all things that we can inform by data and prioritize to deliver yeah. maximum outcome. Oh my God, cool. What are you building next? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> you have to kill you. <laughs> so talk about the company, origination story, how did it all come together? Give it a little commercial for what you guys are, what the company's all about. Sure, absolutely. So, I founded Eternal Technologies about six and a half years ago. And actually before I started this, I like to call it business number 1.5, 
because my first business was actually a corporate film production company. I started out of high school. I ran that for about a decade. It became the top corporate film production company in Austin. Amazing. And I was looking for ways to scale that. And it wasn't scaling the way that I wanted it to. And we started looking at AI, right? This was around 2017 timeframe when this concept of you know, generated content, deep fakes were just starting to become a thing. And I said, is there a way that we could apply AI in a secure, enterprise scalable, and compliant way to this really powerful technology so that businesses could actually scale their communications through video and engage with their customers in a personalized manner? And so that's where it started, being able to generate personalized video content at scale. Literally millions of people could be engaged with personalized videos. And then it grew from there, right? We added additional media formats, and now we're doing lots of other cool stuff too. Yeah, I remember, I do remember our conversation now at AWS last year, talking about the video piece, yep. and congratulations on your relationship with Dell, and uh, continued success. Thank you, yeah, it's been a fantastic show. We're so thrilled to be partnered with Dell. They're an amazing partner. Looking forward to doing great things together. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Okay, taking off your founder hat, which is probably hard for you since you were a teen founder, what excites you the most about our collective AI future? That's a great question. So I think that you know, this is a, a transformational period, and I know a lot of people are saying that, but if you look at the, the um, you know, historical transformations that have happened, introducing email in the 80s, and then ultimately the internet, and all, all of these different technologies, right, communication, this is, this is a big one, and, and, and it, it's, it's scary in a lot of ways, but it's also something that we can really maximize if, if we do it right. And so it's, you know, the important thing is being thoughtful about what that transformation means. But you know, uh, on, on the stage the other day, they were talking about how you know, we're worried that AI may replace people's jobs, but they said the same thing about the internet, they said the same thing mm -hmm. about a lot of different technologies. Yep. So I think this is just the next evolution, and you know, as long as this technology is being used for more good than bad, like the internet, Right, it's going to be a net positive to society. Yeah. Absolutely, what a wonderful note to conclude on. John, thank you so much for bringing your energy, your enthusiasm, and your out of the box solutions for everyone in the AI enterprise. John, pleasure as always. And thank all of you fabulous individuals, wherever you might be tuning in from, to our three days of live coverage here at Dell Tech World in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.